Hi everyone, it's Chenzo from Reality Art Pod. I'm here to talk about week 11 of Big Brother 25. Last week was exquisite. Bowie Jane was HOH and sent Cameron packing. Now he's the first member of the jury. And Julie unleashed the comic verse, saying there was going to be a multi veto and an invisible HOH. I admit, I totally wasn't listening when Julie was talking about what's coming up this week. Before I dive in, if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, I'm going to put a link in the description of the video to my BB25 playlist so you can go back and watch any recaps that you might have missed. So Thursday night, the house guests returned to the HOH room to see that a Chris has crashed through the ceiling from the comic verse. In the DR, Sari gives herself her flowers for the week, saying that this week has been exceptional for her, some would say exquisite, because she survived the block and they got rid of Cockroach Cam. The comic verse siren goes off and there's a message that says that space crystals unleash superpowers into the house. The first superpower is the BB power of invisibility. There will be an invisible HOH who can keep their identity a secret and they'll also be able to play in the next HOH. I don't know how they expected them to really keep this a secret because there's only eight people in the house. This would have been a lot better with more people in the house like imagine if Cameron's HOH when he nominated Felicia and Izzy were invisible. Corey wants him, America, Matt, and Jag to all try for it and share the power. Jag says this might be the week to take the shot at Corey and America. Felicia and Sari feel like an invisible HOH would be great for them because they aren't big targets. For the HOH competition, they're playing BB Comics. Felicia comes in looking so cute in her costume. They have to do the usual sorting the comics to find the real ones and not the bootleg ones. It's very, very stupid to make this the invisible HOH competition. Clearly, Sari and Felicia have zero shot of winning this. It should have been a crapshoot, trivia, or how bad do you want it? Felicia has some really hard falls off the trapeze. She says she's hitting the ground like blam, pow. BAM! And every time she shakes and the camera shakes. They show Bowie's comic and she's a boomerang and this is more two-dimensional storytelling like I talked about last time. At this point, Bowie Jane has been in this house for 70 plus days and the only takeaway you have to send to the comic book illustrator is she's Australian. Felicia's comic is her in the kayak. You had so much material for Felicia. Come on, the spices, the t-shirt dress, the Mike Peck Marvel. They fumbled the ball so hard with these comics. The worst offense might be that Cerise is her in her robe because after all these years, decades with Ceri, all we know is that Ceri wears a robe. Felicia does a really impressive impression of Hysim's laugh. Then she says, let me go hit this red buzzer. Pfft. I don't know why she blows a raspberry, but she does. Felicia is just so silly and funny, and I'm so happy she wasn't evicted the first week. Felicia's time ends up being 18 minutes, and I'm happy she completed it. Matt says he likes his comic and that there's a joke about peeing in the pool because that is so true. Any more context there, buddy? Blue says BB Comics is kitty kitty boots down iconique and says, I'm not gonna lie, I have the best comic, kitty kitty boots down purr. Come on now, Miss Kitty Girl, purr. She gets it wrong and she says she did not catch a case of the lucky girl syndrome, so she needs to fix them so she can slay Boots Down. For most of these comics, you could just pick whichever comic looks better between the real ones and the decoys, and it's probably right, like, probably a witch has a witch hat and not not a witch hat. Corey goes, and I have no notes. I'm bored with Corey now. Falling from the trapeze is probably the most physical challenge I've ever seen Sari doing. They don't even show her finishing, which isn't a good sign. Jag is very fast as usual. He always does good at things when he has to go fast. He really is cockle doodle zoom. America takes a few too many trips on the zip line, and she's just hoping that she and Alba Corey win HOH. Alba Corey, Alba Corey, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But they, but Bowie reveals the winning time is 8 minutes and 30 seconds, and nobody reacts. They all start comparing times. Jag has the winning time but doesn't want to own it. America thinks Blue won even though Blue is being honest with her. Felicia says clearly the winner wasn't me or Sari and putting them up would be a foolish misuse of their superpower. Jag and Matt continue to try to frame Blue for being the HOH. Then Jag tells Matt and celebrates standing and shouting in the diary room. Later, Jag tells Corey and America that he's HOH. Why lie in the first place? Corey calls him a lying liar. The superhero narrator summons them for and conducts the nomination ceremony. When we find out that Felicia and Blue have been nominated. Felicia's pissed off and Blue is clueless. We move on to Tuesday's supersized 90 minute episode. After the ceremony, Felicia announces that this was a wasted superpower. She DRs, don't let me win that veto because y'all been fucking with me this whole damn season. Jag is still lying to Blue, but she suspects that he won the HOH. Felicia marches right over to Corey and Jag in the hammock. She says, I like to be very direct. Who's the target, me or Blue? She gets no answers, but makes sure to remind them that this is a wasted superpower. She says, okay, let me go eat my lazy. Lasagna. America sees value in Blue and doesn't want Blue to leave. She tells Blue that she's being targeted, she is on the block, and that they need to target Matt and Jag. Blue unwisely isn't buying it. They get another message from the comic verse. America hates the womp. Womp, womp. The cosmic crystal unleashes the power of multiplicity, multiplying the number of players in the veto comp from six to eight, and has multiplied the number of vetoes for grabs up to two. I love this. This gets a come on God from Felicia and a come on God from me. 
Like clockwork, Blue goes right to Matt and Jag to rat out what America said. This was bad for Blue, but also good for Blue somehow because Jag now feels like he made the wrong nominations. I said last week that Jag was most likely to win HOH and his best noms strategically would have been Corey and America. So the fact that he's already made the wrong nominations and is now realizing the right move to make is not something I'll give him credit for. For the veto, they're playing on the standing on disc endurance competition that's usually an HOH. The set is outside the house on location. I like this, more of this please. And they're pretty much just in the neighborhood for from the nether region but daytime makes no sense but there's a giant transformer overseeing the action where is the nether gorgon i really miss that guy felicia falls first and i feel like felicia has clocked in so many hard falls this season it's got to be some kind of record bowie just wants to help out the t Woo! and she falls the joke where they fall in the middle of their diary room confessional is so played out at this point Sari says she doesn't want to win this veto and have to decide and falls but be for real she didn't have a chance on this Corey falls, Matt wipes out, and then America throws it unwisely. The challenge comes down to Blue and Jag, both trying their best and getting bonked by the Transformer. Jag shouts out, cockle doodle zoom, and Blue shouts, kitty kitty purr. After two hours, Blue falls and Jag wins another POV. The next video will be them just guessing how long Jag can hold onto a bar that's flying around in a circle, and the two people with the worst guesses will also have a punishment. The incentive for Jag to hold on is for every 15 seconds he holds on, he gets $500. Jag does his challenge. It's really boring watching him hold onto this handle and just fly around slowly in a circle, but he does a really good job. He hangs on for 110 seconds and makes $3,500, which is so much money for two minutes work. Blue guesses 105 seconds and wins the second veto, and according to her, her first competition of the summer, Girly Pop, it's October. Felicia and Sari have the worst scores, so they'll get punishments. Felicia gets 24 hours solitary confinement in the comic room. She says, okay. In the DR, she says, the good news is I get to be by myself and away from these silly house guests for 24 hours. Sari's punishment is she has to change into a superhero costume every time Big Brother asks her to. We get a treat of a whole lot of Felicia in her solitary confinement, eating her peanut butter, muttering to herself, using her pop-up toilet, wishing us all the sweetest good night. I got a glimpse of the tag on her infamous t-shirts and they are Ugg brand. Felicia, you were holding out on us. I didn't know that you were wearing Ugg brand t-shirt dresses all season. Okay. Sari suits up into her superhero costume and she looks so silly in her mask. It's so poorly made. They make her take an outdoor shower. Guess what's under a tray? She guesses fiber gummies every time. So after the fun, we get back to the seriousness. Jag now has to decide what he wants to do with his veto. He says it's going to be blood on his hands no matter what. He might as well put up Corey and America both by using his veto. Matt's down. Matt is always down for messiness. Felicia gets released from solitary, and ever since she's been out of solitary, she's been especially hilarious on the feeds, especially with Suri. I feel like the solitary confinement was a really good reset for Felicia. Jag was around the house telling Felicia, Suri, and Bowie that he's the HOH and nominating Corey in America. Nobody's more thrilled than Felicia, who pounces on him to hug him. We end the episode with Jag telling Blue that he was the one who nominated her, and she's way too cool about it, and then we end the 90-minute episode with a cliffhanger, because that's what they do now. Why? Why can't we get the veto meeting at the end of the veto episode? I don't mean to be pissed, but we have time we had 90 minutes we move on to the thursday episode my episode was delayed due to buddy games a show that nobody's watching right but julie is looking gorgeous in a simple black dress with an exquisite design then the comic book announcer is back to recap the show including talking about how kitty kitty purse laid and then back in the house hey kittens it's time for the veto meeting but first Suri has to change into her super suit and wave at her adoring fans blue uses her veto on herself and jag nominates a America. Jag then decides to use the veto on Felicia and Corey and America go flush. Corey is nominated and America instantly breaks down. Jag says, sorry, Corey and America, but the watch ticks for thee. Who talks like this? In the diary room, America says through tears, fuck Jag, fuck Matt too. Blue says, welcome to hell, Corey and America. My name is Blue and I'll be your tour guide this week. Blue Kim, are you the Nether Gorgon's intern? Corey asks Jag why he's nominated. Jag pretty much tells Corey that Corey was going to come for him. America comes out of nowhere and pops off on Jag. Jag accuses America. America of having the worst stretch of gameplay all season, and that's so rich coming from Jag, the person who was evicted. Sari and Felicia relish in the Americori Jat Infinity War starting, and they're planning to profit off of it. America iconically tells Jag to literally fuck off in the bathroom mirror and then cries in bed to Corey, telling him it's her fault that they're on the block. America says she wants to give up her game for Corey and cause chaos in the house. Corey says he can't do that because he's still trying to win the game. America goes to Blue and basically tells Blue that ratting her out to Matt and Jag was stupid. Blue says she may be open to working together still, but Blue says America's campaigning basically sucks. Super Sari has some more tasks to scare Blue. Why? Then she has to stay in the pool for two hours. Then she has to do a hundred laps of walking. She reflects on losing all her friends. She says to add insult to injury, you put me in the
in this dumbass costume. The only thing worse for Suri would probably be to add a balance beam to this. It's really funny seeing Suri be annoyed with her punishment in the diary room. Cory and Blue meet to talk in her office, aka the chair by the pool. Cory is campaigning way better than America and Blue knows it. This show makes it seem like Blue's vote will be the deciding factor of the week. Cory's campaign is for them to keep him in the game so he can target Matt and Jag. Suri and Blue think about the idea and acknowledge that they and Felicia could be the votes to save Cory if they wanted to. Felicia somehow has giant round spectacles that are just a spectacle. Watching this, I really do feel like it would be smarter for the ladies to keep Cory around. Like, I really do feel like they might need him to beat Matt and Jag in competitions. Cory's speech is kind of weird where he's mocking Cameron, but Cameron's not there and he even uses Cameron's daughter's name. Like, it's so weird. And he calls himself daddy. Like, I've heard enough. America is more charismatic and funny. She shouts out the AmeriCory haters and her speech is by and large just better than Cory's. Cory ends up evicted unanimously. There's no fun in games with the voting this week. America washing machines Cory's face on the way out. Julie puts up before and after of his time in the house and the after picture is just such an unflattering photo. Julie tells us that next week there will be a real double eviction so we'll see about that. With that we have to say goodbye to Cory and I had Cory ranked fourth in my original rankings. My impression was that he was smart and would outperform his brother in, and he really did and he was smart. In the early game he was one of the better diary room narrators. Suri being there provided a real roadblock for Cory at every corner of the game. There wasn't a lot of wiggle room for him to operate. For the first half of the game he operated from the shadows trying to work with Jared not knowing that Jared was Suri's operative. The public fight with Jared was probably the beginning of the end for Cory. When he won HOH, he ended up evicting Jared and then just stopped playing. After that, he became extremely distracted by his showmance with America. Overall, the worst parts of his game were that he got really distracted. Actually, that was a big part of it is how much he was distracted by America. I actually think that an even bigger weakness is inflexibility or fear of making big moves. Cory was so against the move to target Izzy really just out of fear. Honestly, if they didn't make that move at that time, they probably would have evicted Cory before now. The biggest pro for him is that he is really smart. I don't think we'll ever see him again on Big Brother, but maybe we'll see him on The Amazing Race with America or maybe with Zach. But yeah, I overall just don't think he was entertaining enough to be asked back. So with that said, let me get into some rankings for the week. At the time I'm recording this, it's Thursday night, so we don't have an HOH just yet. So I'm kind of just making these rankings based off who I think could win HOH. At number seven, I have Blue, who last week was sixth. The only reason that Blue is in the house right now is because she won that veto. She thinks that Matt and Jag are her allies, but Kitty Girl Boots Per, they were trying to target you this week. Matt and Jag's final five do not include Blue or America, and out of the two of them, they're going to target Blue first because she's harder to get out of the game. The biggest thing that she has going for her is her relationship with Felicia and Suri. The problem is, with a double eviction coming up, I find it hard to see a situation where Blue doesn't go home next Thursday. I think the only scenario where Blue survives this double is if somehow Matt, Jag, or Bowie are two of the next people evicted. She has a chance, she's not doomed, but most likely, I don't think we'll be seeing her after next Thursday. So Blue stands, I say enjoy your kitty kitty purr purr ru taka kaka while you can. Next in sixth, I have America who last week was fifth. Kind of a similar sentiment to Blue. I think that she's a little bit less of a target at first than Blue, but if she's nominated with Blue and Blue wins a veto, America could easily be the first person out on Thursday. This week and this double is a really good time for America to figure out how to win some competitions. Also, I still don't feel good about her ever winning Big Brother if she doesn't win a competition. And she just lost her closest ally in the game, so I can't really see a path for America to win the game. So yeah, slightly better than Blue, but still not good. In fifth, I have Felicia, who last week I had in seventh. I don't think that Felicia did anything really good to benefit her game to move herself up the list. I just think that other players are doing worse than her. I do feel good about Felicia surviving the double eviction. I think whoever she's on the block against just does go home. I guess the only way she would go home is if maybe she's up against Suri. I don't know. I feel like Felicia's in the top five. So she's here in fifth. In fourth, I put Jag, who last week I also had as fourth. I feel like he has the competition ability to just win out until the end which is good for him but just bad for like the vibe it's so boring just watching one person be able to win everything because they're fast i really wish i could have put him further down on the list because his gameplay this week was really bad like when he won this hoh he should have just nominated cory in america instead he pretty quickly told them that he was hoh then by luck the double veto gives him the chance to make the move that was right for him in the first place but by then he's put up half the house in one week and there's nothing fun if it's an invisible hoh and they just tell everyone they're hoh but there's a high likelihood that he wins the next hoh again because, of course, it's always the darkest timeline. So, in third, I have Bowie Jane, who last week was third again. It's just crazy because I think Bowie is playing a terrible game, and I think everyone that I put before Bowie is playing a terrible game. To the extent that Bowie is just so high up because she literally does nothing. And I also would have ranked her lower if I could because this week was terrible for her. She's so tied up with Matt and Jag that now everyone wants her out too. The big benefit is, I don't think anyone that actually is talking about getting her out can win a competition. So, whatever, we have our top two people who I think it's just one of the two of them are going to win the game. In number two, I have Matt, who last week I had as number two. I don't have too much to say about Matt, and I wish that he was more active in the game, but he kind of 
kind of just hangs around and encourages Jack to do crazy shit. Truly, Matt's biggest game move has been saving Jack from being evicted. That was an investment that really paid off long term because Jack really does a lot, a lot, a lot of work for Matt. He is his employee just like Blue is the Nether Gorgon's intern. But I don't have too much to say about Matt this week. Let's move on to number one, who's Sari. And last week, Sari was number one as well. The big difference between Matt and Sari is that Matt, people talk about getting him out. I don't think that they can, but nobody's talking about getting Sari out. They're just all fighting amongst themselves, letting Sari slip to the end, and that is literally her strategy. I've mentioned this before, and I have a long-term concern about how Sari actually gets to the final two chairs. Obviously, like I keep saying, it's going to come down to whether Sari can convince someone to be foolish enough to take her to the final two, and I think that she can. I think if it's Sari, Matt, and Jag in the final three, we all have a very stressful week full of anxiety, and Sari successfully tricks one of them into taking her into the final two. That's my prediction. It's not the final three I want. I'm about to just drop that and bounce, so don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. I'm so close to my goal. I set a goal to get to 100 subscribers in my first season of Big Brother, and thank you to all of you who have supported along the way. See you next week. Bye!